Um, it's it's a bunch of ROMs, basically. It's that, that that's it. Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Pod 'em Up. My name is Ollie and I'm joined as always by my friend Tibbs. Hello Tibbs. Hello. How you doing mate? I'm doing good, yeah. Not too bad. Yeah? yeah. Cool. It's been a bit busy but it's, it's, it's all been good. Yeah, me too. I've had a lot of work, work going on. A lot, had a, you know, I've had child problems kicking off this evening. So by the way listeners, if you hear a baby crying in the background of this episode, don't don't be alarmed. I'm not like, um, you know, keeping a... a, a, a stock of children that we're, we're punishing in the background it's just it's just my little girl going through some sort of cold that uh, my wife's looking after a stock of children a stock of children <laughs> yeah i don't know why i said a stock of children it's clearly just one child but you know is that the <laughs> that might be the collective name for, it, for children the, I don't know, the collective noun of ill children yeah. certainly yeah yeah cool yeah so that's life yeah. yeah so it sounds like uh you might have had your hands full have you been playing much since our last show i mean it's it's been a bit i mean i've had sort of I don't like saying like oh real life stuff, but mm. do, do you know what I mean? We've we've had sort of bits and pieces come up that sort of delayed the recording of this episode. We were going to try and record it last week, weren't we? But then, yeah. um, we got caught up with things and stuff got in the way. So yeah, it's I just think, life, really. Isn't it? I was yeah. going to say, I think I, just life's got in the way of a few things in, since the last recording. So I don't know if you've had time, much time to sort of sit down and, and play any games. Or I've had a bit. Yeah, um, I've um, got a fair bit more done on Chrono Trigger. Um, oh, cool. yeah. I think I'm about halfway through it now, Bro. Um, roughly. Um, yeah, it's a really good game. I really like it a lot. Uh, it's just it's it's just nice and simple. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. it's not um, you know comparing it to um, Xenoblade Chronicles, which I think I'm going to kind of give up on because I'm just not feeling it. To be uh, honest, yeah. that game. Um, it's just so complicated. Uh, the battle system you know it was going all right for a while and then it suddenly just threw everything at you and i'm like ah, and you know just there's a battle going on i have no idea what's going on so but in, <laughs> in contrast to that this is this is so nice and simple and it's just it doesn't have an intimidating amount of depth to it i would say it's yeah. it, it's just that the battle system is really nice and simple you've got various different moves and you kind of just i'm at the stage now where battles are getting quite complicated in the sense that you need to figure out a certain strategy to uh to, to beat them uh, and that's getting quite, uh, you know, quite fun actually. Um, so yeah, it's it's a really good game. Um, yeah, enjoying it. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I've been playing. Um, we've been playing on Rush. Oh, that's a um, racing thing. It's yeah. It, I've not it, well, seen it makes... much about it. I, I I saw lots of hype on Twitter about you know pre-order it now this that and the other, but I I don't, didn't really get involved with the the. They did like an open beta and stuff for it, didn't they? Like, yeah, I didn't really pay much attention to it when it was coming out. I just heard about it on a couple of podcasts, like two different uh, podcasts really raved about it. And um, it's it's very reminiscent of like Burnout, um, oh, okay. which I which I loved back in the day. Burnout yeah. 3 was amazing. So it's a bit, it's, it makes a point of saying it's not a racing game. It's got loads of cars and stuff in it, but you're racing around this kind of track. And it's not about who gets to the end. It's like there's loads and loads of cars and bikes all at the same time. And you're in a big team. Um, and you've basically got to uh, take down the other team in a burnout style. Mm. Um, there's loads of different... I think there's different... Um, I haven't played a lot of it yet, to be honest. But there's loads of different game modes and stuff. Um, you know, I, I've only counted two really. One of them is like... Um, you know, get more boost points, which you can do by trashing other people. Uh, another one is get through gates 
as you you know and then it sort of it collect, collects the team points and it's kind of like which team won overall in the end is it like um, an online only thing or is it single player no 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 no, no. I'm, well it, I think the online is, is the popular mode but I'm just playing single player at the moment um, uh, yeah it's really good fun uh, it's, it's just got that burnout kind of <laughs> manic smashing into stuff uh, kind of fun really it's yeah. it's it, it it struck a chord with me just looking at it because it, it you don't see a lot of that kind of those kind of games these days no i mean yeah the, the, the burnout series sort of fizzled out really didn't it it did it had paradise which paradise was remastered was, oh, paradise was a really good game as well i really enjoyed that um, i didn't i didn't get into that one so much i think it was the open world nature of it i, I yeah. think i kind of preferred the the more linear you know here's an event here's an event here's an event kind and, of thing rather than but i do kind of get why some people like Paradise. And then didn't they just do an uh, an EA Need for Speed that was basically just Burnout Paradise reskinned for Need for Speed, or did I imagine that? I don't know. And I'm then, sure about that then one. it all just sort of yeah, sort of fizzled out from there because it, it surprised mm. me because Paradise did really quite well, and you know you, mm. you'd have thought yeah. that would have sort of you know carried on with a, another sequel, but you would think so. It's a great it's a great formula. Yeah, um, and yeah. But I mean, if you like um, Burnout, you should yeah, check, uh, yeah, check out On Rush because it is um, it is good so far. I haven't played that much into it to be honest, but um, I would say because the team mechanic, because there's so many other cars and stuff in there, I kind of felt like you know sometimes I was doing quite badly, but we still won. Mm. So because there's so many other cars in it, I kind of feel like you know, am I really contributing much to this? But you know, yeah, early days, yeah. That's kind early of how days. I feel when I'm playing Splatoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, well, did I, yeah. did I really contribute that much to that? I, I <laughs> yeah. don't know if I did. I was just along for the ride, I think. Yeah. But um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I'll probably check that out to be honest, because that is. Um, I'd recommend it. Yeah, it's um, it's um, I think it's kind of dropping in price now. I, was I picked say, it up because it was. I don't know if I'd want to buy pay full retail for it. I don't know if. I'd oh no! I only paid about twelve. Um, 12 quid for it i oh, saw it right. on um i followed post a bargain on twitter and they tweeted that it was um the only difference is it's a french version so it's, it's sort of the game is the oh, same right. but the, like the, yeah. the back sometimes i order from amazon and i get the french version anyway of games for some reason yeah um so i thought nah, that's fine yeah i did that so, with um uh sonic forces for the switch i got like a a spanish or a brazilian one yeah, or something it but, you know it's, it's literally just the, the back of the box yeah. you don't even get manuals anymore these days really so no, you don't do you, know, you? that's, that's no. another thing we'll get on our soapbox about at some point i'm sure but... <laughs> i do i do miss a good manual oh, so do i yeah mm. so do i but yeah well that's pretty good that's a yeah um oh uh, the only other thing was um soul caliber 6 they did um it's not quite out yet i don't think but they did a online play test oh yeah uh the other day um i only caught the end of it because i only found out it was going on on the last sort of night um, but I'm not. I'm not even a PlayStation um, Plus subscriber. But I think any, anyone could play. So I got on there, and um, yeah, I really liked it. It's, um, it's been a while since I played Soul, Soul Calibur. I played the first two. Mm. I really, really enjoyed those. Um, and this one is kind of. It, it looks like the first one, like the character designs and and the, you know the the roster on it and everything. So um, so I really enjoyed that actually. Yeah, so, funny enough, I, I got a couple of um, faulty Dreamcasts that I'm working on at the moment, and. Yeah. I got one, one, of the, one of the test discs I was working with was um, Soul Calibur to, to try mm. and, you know, see if it was all working again. And um, But I couldn't get to boot because it doesn't like the VGA cable. It just moans. It says this game doesn't support the yes, cable I've you're using. So like, I oh. found that when, when emulating it, actually. Yeah, it still comes up with that message. Yeah, I can be fa- I can be fussed with all the faffing about it. would need to get it working, so I just played something else. But I, I, I saw it on the shelf. I was like, oh, yeah, I've I'm, I'm not played that for a long time. I sat down and played a bit of Soul Calibur. But... Yeah, it's just a great yeah. button masher. And yeah. I'm, I, I, fighting games, I'm, I'm not very good at, as we'll, as we'll find out later when we talk about the fighting game <laughs> on the episode. But, uh, um, you know, Soul Calibur is a, is a great sort of real button masher. Um, you know, and I, I sort of won about half of the games and I'm not very good. So that was quite... That was, it's a genuine sort of you know you're not going to get thrashed you know you've got a good chance yeah um and yeah it was it was kind of the same old really they um they had these sort of um moments where the whole action sort of slowed down went in slow motion while your character like did a special move um and sort of that was kind of automatic but there was i'm sure there were certain occasions where someone was doing it to me and i it seemed like if my character was in the right the right position and doing the right thing i could press a certain button and sort of counteract it and sort of block it mm. so that's quite quite a cool addition yeah um 
But yeah, I think I'll, I think I'm going to pick that up at some point. Yeah, I'll get back into the series. Uh, mm. Yeah, it's, it's one of the yeah, like we I, I'm the same. I'm not sort of uh, tremendously skilled at fighting games, but I do enjoy you know some of the the, the games that really sort of scale their difficulty so you can enjoy it even if you're not very good at it things like dead or alive tekken mm. soul caliber you know even if you're not great at fighting games you can still get a lot of enjoyment out of them so i always try and and, and keep up with those series really so yeah I'll, I'll, I'll check that out yeah um i think that's about it um for me gameplay wise um how about you um not a great deal um i went back to splatoon for a bit um mm. I avoided it once because it started once the the switch was hacked. Um, Splatoon's very easy to cheat on. There's no really? at the time there was there was no anti cheat sort of code in there at all. So you know it, it was there were people just ruining the game really. You know modifying weapons and you know it's just ridiculous. Isn't it? I mean you kind of think what what's the point? So you're going to win easily. So what? What does that get you? Yeah, you know what I mean? Is, exactly. Are you really are you really having fun doing that? No, you know what that's I mean? what I mean. It's it's just so. It, it's so pointless. It's, it's, it's so incredibly pointless. pointless yeah. You know, especially you know a game like Splatoon is you know it's just a game about having fun anyway. You know, it's not sort of super serious. I know some people do take it really competitive and serious, like, but I mean, mm. the spirit of the game is just just to have fun in there, really. So, of course, it is. Yeah. yeah so I, I steered away from it for a while, and I thought with the the advent of uh, Nintendo Switch Online, where you're going to have yeah. to, you know you now have to pay to to use the online services, I thought that might have weeded out some of the you know that some of the cheating i thought people might be a bit more hesitant to cheat if there's uh, you know actual money on the line if they get banned so um mm. and to be fair with the, the bits i did play there wasn't i didn't see any evidence of anyone uh, messing about or you know um, okay. being unsportsmanlike so you know hopefully that will you know continue to to stay the same but um mm. was there yeah. much cheating going on in the first one the wii u one um, people say there was, but I never experienced it. No, I didn't. That's the I haven't got Splatoon two, but um, I played the first one a lot, and I never, I don't recall no, uh, experiencing I mean, much cheating. I mean, I, there were certain there were I, certain times where I just get slaughtered by everyone, but I didn't, I didn't see anyone doing anything. No, no, I didn't off. either, to be honest. And I got, you know, I was quite late to the the Wii U party, to be honest. I got mm. quite towards the end of its its lifespan. Mm. Um. And I ser- I was certainly playing it online after the the Wii U had been, you know, hacked and, That's and, right, yeah, and things yeah. like that. So, but mm. yeah, maybe I was just lucky with it. Maybe that you know mm. the times I played, or I don't know. Maybe like I say, maybe I was just lucky. But I yeah, I didn't I didn't witness much, if anything, in the way of cheating. I can't remember any specific instances, but apparently it was rampant towards the end of of the Wii U's life. So. Right. Yeah, it's a shame. Um, I'm, it's I'm just, a shame. I'm just surprised Nintendo didn't you know think to put any anti-cheat mechanisms in there you know if it's it's if it's as simple as just editing because it seems to be the case it's just um as simple as editing a save file everything is all the the weapon stats and your character stats are all just saved (laughs) on the 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 save file so if you modify that there's no there's no checks done by the game or the server to make sure that you know key files haven't been modified or anything it's just Mm. I don't know. It just seems a a, a bit of an oversight, uh, but yeah. Mm. So I, I played that for a bit. That was um, that was quite okay. good fun. Um, I played the. It's not like a new release or anything, but um, at Tanglewood, have you? Oh yes, yes, yes. The, yeah, I was um, the new I was Mega Drive game. Did you get the Mega Drive version or did you get it on Steam? I, I just played the demo. I just played the demo that's on the yeah. website. Um, popped I've played that demo. Popped onto my EverDrive. And, um, so I was playing it on the, the original hardware, but it was just a demo version. That's exactly what I did um, a few months ago now. But um, yeah, it's really good, isn't it? It's, it's really good, yeah. I, mm. It took me a while to figure out what I was doing. Yeah. And initially I found that a bit frustrating. And then I thought, well... Oh, that's kind of like what games were back then. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. I've had so many games where I was just like, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what what I'm doing here. This is, but eventually, you know, I got into the swing of it and I realised, you know, um, you know what you were supposed to do and how you were, how you got the powers and. Hmm. Um, it's a really nice sort of game of discovery where you sort of you're, you're moving around and you, you can't quite, as you say, you can't quite figure out what to do, but then you suddenly discover it and it kind of opens up. Yeah, you know, a new area, and then you kind of carry on. It's um, yeah, it sort of gripped me for um, you know, I didn't complete the demo, but um, and I, 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 I've meant to. I never get back to it, but it was um, I really liked what 
I really liked what I played here. Yeah. yeah, me too. I, I'm gonna. I'm hoping to order the the physical cartridge version. Um, I know they're taking mm. pre-orders at the moment. I can't afford it, it right now, but um, I thought it was out already. Was it not? Right oh yeah, yeah. Um, the game's out. You can buy if you buy it on Steam uh, digitally. Then you get the you the, get the PC version and you get the ROM file. as That's well. right. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they've they're doing a run of actual cartridges with boxes and manuals yes. and the whole thing as well. Um, okay, so they haven't been released yet. Right. Um, they've released the first, but they're doing it in, in small batches. I think they might. I th- yeah. I assume they must be just um, getting the pre-orders in so they know how many to produce and then producing yeah. them on demand kind of thing. So mm. I think they're um, quite expensive to produce. I can imagine there's not many. Uh, Got factories around producing Mega Drive cartridges. No, sadly. I wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> no, so I think it's uh, the cartridge version is sixty pounds. I think, which isn't too yeah. bad, you know, for a uh, you know a one-off cartridge. Mm. Um, and that's it, kind of in line with what cartridges were back in the day. Anyway, I think I paid sixty pounds for Sonic Two. Yeah, did you? So, yeah, mm. I think it was around. It was it was about fifty or sixty pounds because it was my my the entirety of my my Christmas money at the time. I think that's so, mental, really, because considering that's that's sort of the maximum you pay for a your sort of a, a new AAA game as soon as it comes out now, yeah. isn't it? Really? Yeah, I mean games are cheaper than ever now. Really, I mean they're still yeah. expensive, but I mean they're they're cheaper than they than they used to be. Definitely. Um, mm. I mean I, I don't want to get too off topic, but I was looking at I found a, a website that did um, old magazine scans. Yeah. I was just looking some through some old um, gaming magazines um, mm. from around sort of ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand sort of era. I love doing. I love doing that. Yeah, it's, great, it's, it's it? really good. It's, it's really like these, fascinating. These little time capsules of, of yeah. you know what was going on, yeah. um, and they had adverts for like um, Electronics Boutique, which was a, mm. a big retailer at the time, and they mm. were advertising like Lilac Wars on N sixty four, and it was like seventy nine ninety nine. Jesus I was like, Christ! I was like, That's mental. That is mental. I don't remember them being that expensive. No, I don't either. I'm That's sure like, it was like, weird. you know, the same, similar sort of 40 quid, you know. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Like Goldeneye, like 69.99. It's like, what? What's going on? I know. No, I know. I, 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 I know sure PlayStation I games weren't that expensive. I know PlayStation games were think, always around the 40, 40, 45 pound mark. But, yeah. And I knew the cartridges were a little bit more, but I didn't realize I don't, it was like that much. No, I think they were ripping people off there. I don't. I mean, I used to get my games from. Um, Special Reserve, yeah. which to, to a lot of people is um is a mail order thing, but I was I was right long gone, in Brit- I'm afraid. long gone, yeah. But um, in Bristol there was a shop, wasn't there? Yeah, just down the road from where I lived, so I used to go down there all the time, um, and that's where I'd get my games from, and they were usually, but I'm sure they were even N64 games were like forty quid. I'm sure they were. Yes, unless that was a special price. I'm not sure. I don't know. They did they did advertise the cheapest prices in town, I believe. So you know mm. maybe they just had a, a little. No yeah. deal going on. I don't I know. know. Maybe they stole them. I don't stole know. them. <laughs> Stolen goods. Who knows? Who knows? I'm sure right. they didn't, but you know. It's a good job they're bankrupt now, isn't it? Otherwise, yeah. you, you, you yeah. could get in trouble for saying that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, Tanglewood, yeah. So I was hmm. quite impressed with with the whole thing, considering it's just developed by one guy. It's amazing, um, isn't it? He's um, he's a... I think he's either a former or still current um, Traveller's Tales employee, I believe. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, he's... Um, uh, I th- yeah, I think he's made. He sort of. Um, I was reading an interview with him. He was. Um, I think he was working on some of the Lego games, mm. and they asked him. Uh, there was something that he needed to do. They asked him to like go really deep into like assembler code to to fix something, and that's how he kind of got into into coding like really kind of hardcore low level kind of stuff. Yeah. So and that's kind of resulted in him making his own Mega Drive game, and um, it's just amazing that that's. Yeah. But that's coming this, you know, in 2018. You know, a new Mega Drive game. How crazy yeah. is that? And there's an, the, another one um, coming out, not not by the um, same developer, different different developers. Um, mm. Kung Fu UFO. Um, that's I haven't on, heard of that one. I don't think. Yeah, that's being crowdfunded on Indiegogo at the moment, um, mm. and that, that's going to have a, a physical cartridge release um, for Mega Drive. Um, there was a Streets of Rage style one called Paprium, um, mm. but I think it might have fizzled out. Uh, the last I heard oh, of it, um, it kind of gone quiet. The developers have gone quiet. Um, I think that was Kickstarter as well. So that's a shame if you've um, if you've backed that. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know. They might still be going on. That's just what I heard. Yeah. Uh, but that looked really interesting. They they did some um, really special stuff with the hardware for the um, like the sound. Uh, I think they had custom it had like a custom chip in it to oh, improve right. the sound quality of their music. 
uh, which would have been really interesting if yeah. it's not, I mean it's, it may still come to come to light but I think we might mm. discuss this before but I mean that that is one of the the really cool things about cartridges that they had over um, CD based games is the fact that you could add custom chips and custom yeah. hardware mm. onto the boards that you know can expand the capabilities of the consoles. Yeah, um, you know that's a really cool thing that's you know not possible with you know with discs. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? It's, it you know you had to, what did you have? You had Sonic and Knuckles, obviously that yeah, could expand Sonic itself. Knuckles, Pokemon Pinball with a little vibration thing built into it. Um, yeah, there was uh, uh, Boktai with the the optical sensor to you yeah. know it worked better when you played it in daylight. And yeah. you had micro machines with the extra controller. Micro ports. machines with it, yeah, the J cart ports. Um, yeah. you know the great, um, great stuff, Super yeah. FX chips on the N sixty oh um, N sixty four uh, Super Nintendo. Yeah. yeah, there's loads of you know is. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, so um, yeah, I will. I will probably be trying to get that. Um, I don't know how long the pre-orders are going to last, or if there's going to be a, a third batch of pre-orders after this one. I, I just can't afford it at the moment. So I'm hoping mm. that you know, when I've got the money available, then you know it'll still be still be out there to to purchase because I would like to to get my hands yeah, on it. Yeah, a great thing out, to own. Yeah. Yeah, I missed out on um another Mega Drive release a few years ago, but um, Pier Solar. Yeah, I've heard of that. Um, they did a really cool um, uh, addition to the physical release where you had the cartridge, but if you had the Mega CD uh, attachment, you had a soundtrack CD, and it oh, would wow. you it would play the game from the cartridge, but stream the soundtrack from the audio CD. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and it's the only game on the Mega Drive to use that functionality. Apparently, that is capable of it, but no game ever actually utilized it. Really? It was the first one to, to do it. Um, yeah. And they did like a package where you got the soundtrack CD and the cartridge and all that. But again, they, they you know, I missed a boat on that one. It's, um, mm. You know, are going to be eBay scalpers to to pay if I want to get my hands on that one. Now, I think. Yeah, that's a shame. Um, yeah. I suppose could you um, you could recreate it? I suppose with an oh, yeah. drive and a and a CD. Yeah, yeah. Know, yeah. I think I, I think if you buy the digital version, because I'm sure they still sell the like the digital versions, mm. um, and you can just burn a copy of the CD and put mm. a ROM on a on an EverDrive and, and play it that way. Um, yeah. Although I do think there's a, an issue. You can't play it on the EverDrive if you've got the 32X plugged in. You have to have it. You have to unplug the 32X and just plug the cartridge straight in. Something about the the memory okay. or, or something. I don't know. It's all complicated. But yeah, but you could mm. recreate recreate it yourself certainly. Mm. Um, a couple of bits of news I think we should discuss. Yes. Um, first one would be the Nintendo Online service. It's gone yes. Live. Um, have, you, have you signed up to this? I signed up for one month just okay. to just to give it a try. Yeah, I'm not impressed. No, personally. Um, have you signed up for it? <laughs> I haven't. No. no. Um, Go on then. It's, it's a bunch of ROMs, basically. It's, yeah, that, exactly. It is a it. bunch of. <laughs> It's a bunch of ROMs. <laughs> I love that it's boiled down. Yeah, it's just a bunch of ROMs. It's a bunch of ROMs. You've, yeah, um, you've signed up to a bunch of ROMs. I'm not. I, I, I don't know what. I don't know what to say about it. It just seems really. They're really pushing this idea that you you get these NES games each month, and it's like, well, yeah. okay. It's, it's Mario Brothers. It's, it's good. It's a good game. Um, cheers. I guess. <laughs> 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 I don't know why. And apparently, well, the, how, how many have they got on them? I don't know, 20, 20 games to begin with. Some, some, it's like twenty or thirty games. I mean, mm. to be fair, it's a fair selection of games. I mean, you know, mm. the, if you've never played them before or you didn't have any other way of getting them, then you know, it's, it might be worth. Yeah, a I few mean, quid uh, a month. Yeah, it. I mean, the, the I NES really know, always... I don't really know who it's aimed at. No, I mean the NES was always bigger in America than it was here. I it think, was. wasn't it? So yeah. I mean, maybe some of the Americans like it a bit. A bit thing more. is, I think if you if you're into games, like seriously into games, if you if you yeah. if it's a, a something, if you would go as far as to call yourself a gamer, you, mm. you know, as a, a main part of your hobby and your free time, mm. you've played Super Mario Brothers three. Uh, you yeah. know, I, I think you've played it, and you've you've got other ways to play it at this point. You know, you yes. you, don't, you don't need to have a subscription to play it. If you're a casual gamer and you you've picked up a Switch um, and you just play it from time to time, are you really going to be that interested in 
sort of thirty year old games. I don't know. Maybe you are. Maybe people are. I, I, uh, I, I just, mean, it, I just don't really know who it's aimed at. No, I think in, the, in that case, it'll just be a quick thing with oh, you just go on and say oh, there's like a load of games here. Let's try them out and you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've never played them before, and if you're you're sort of quite young and you just play them, you'll be like, no disrespect to them, but I think, I don't know, they probably won't hold a lot of people's attention. No, I don't. I mean, would you agree? I would agree. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I think <sighs> Super Mario Brothers Three is, is probably the best one, the best yeah. game of the bunch. Yeah. Um, and it's still a really good game, and I think even if you'd never played it before and you picked it up and you had a go, um, you could put a lot of time into it. It's, it's an yeah. entertaining game. Yeah. But with the new Super Mario Brothers, um, the new Super Mario Brothers Wii U, I don't know what they're calling it, but they're, the, whatever one came out on the Wii U, um, they're porting that to Switch. They are, yeah. That, that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Um is it going to hold your attention compared to the the you know all the bells and whistles of the new one? I, I don't really know, but I mean Nintendo, uh, they've even put online activation DRM onto mm. the the NES games. You have to connect to the internet once every seven days, <laughs> otherwise you lose access to the the the, the, the Nintendo ROMs. It's just bizarre. Yeah. I just don't know what they're thinking. I mean, no wonder they went after all the ROM sites. Yeah. Well, you yeah, you could see something like this coming. Well, everyone kind of knew it was coming anyway. But yeah, they're just they're so uh, terrified of of people playing their games for free, yeah. basically. Uh, and it's just, just it, it's really not and it's really this, not worth it if anymore. If this is their is answer to the virtual console, then you know, I I think. Mm. They've really, they've really missed a trick. I just, it's yeah. just, I don't know. I'm not going to be continuing well, the subscription personally. No, I mean, you could say it's just a start. Maybe if they open up, first of all, like you know, pretty much the whole NES library and then the whole SNES library, yes. then you're kind of, then you're kind of looking at something much more, you know. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if they did something, reasonable. if they did something akin to the Xbox Game Pass or the PlayStation mm. Now service, where you've got, yeah, you know, a range of games from all sorts of, um, you know, I mean, admittedly, Game Pass, I think, is only Xbox One games at the moment. Um, mm. But, I mean, you've got so many there. I mean, th- yeah. it's not just, like, here's a, a handful of old games. I mean, there's, there's current stuff. There's, you exactly. know, they're constantly switching up the library. You know, I mean, it's come a, become a bit of a cliche to call it Netflix for games. But that, it's mm. kind of, it's, it's close to that. Yeah. Um, if they had something like that with a whole range of of like little chunks from Nintendo's history, hmm. you know that, that's something. But yeah. it's just and if not you compare it to the games you get for free with um you know the the, the PS Plus and the the Xbox mm-hmm. Live, you know whatever they call it now, yeah. you know you get like two or three games free a month, right? With those, I yeah. think as long as you can continue your subscription, you yeah. you continue you have access to those games. They're yours. Well, yeah. Uh, with in the case of Xbox, even if you cancel your subscription, they they're yours anyway. They they're yours permanently. Ah, I thought that was the case on the 360. Is it still the case on the Xbox One? Is I it? believe it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's not on the PS4. It's not on the PS4. I did that. No, I did that. I did a free trial of it, and I didn't get to keep my games. But I mean, uh-huh. looking at the the PS4, I think it was last month. The the game they gave away was God of War Three Remastered. Yeah. Um, it's, the, they give away like good games, quite seriously sort of good, games. relatively recent games as well. You know. you know. And much as I love Super Mario Brothers Three, yeah. as you know. As it's an just, incentive it, to subscribe, it doesn't really match with God of War Three. No, I mean, it, and you, you just when you consider that they've done so many virtual consoles on all the different consoles that they've done recently, mm-hmm. and they just it's just the same stuff over and over again, isn't it? And it's it like, oh yeah, rather than give you something new, something exciting, here's Super Mario Brothers Three again. You know? Yeah, and you, look how many millions and millions they sold of the um, NES Classic Edition. Yeah, you know. People have got these games. They bought them recently. Millions, <laughs> tens of millions of people <laughs> have just bought these. Yeah. What, what, I don't exactly. Know. Well, that, exactly. That's Nintendo all over. It's Loads just, of people have just bought them. Let's sell them again. Let's sell them again. It's just it, the whole thing. It's just a real head scratcher for me. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know what they're they're thinking of. But we'll see. I mean, it's it's early days. It's an, to be it's fair. Early days. So yeah. we'll see what they come of it. It could just be the start of something. I'm hoping it is. I'm hoping they'll. They said they're going to add more games, which I'm sure they will. Um, but something other than NES would be nice as something, well. Yeah. 
And then I suppose there is the issue, um, because apparently, again, I don't know if this is true for all games, but I have, I'm under the impression that the online access is peer to peer. Um, Mm. There aren't any dedicated servers. So Mm. you're paying Nintendo for, for what? Yeah, if, that's if, if yeah, exactly. If, so they were doing peer to peer this whole time. Yeah. So if it's you're using your bandwidth, your connection to connect yeah. to someone else's bandwidth and connection that they're already paying for, <laughs> why Nintendo getting a slice of the pie? I don't understand. That's that. Yeah, that's a really really good point. I don't understand. You're basically paying them for you know twenty NES games. Yeah. Which you already have. Which somewhere. you've already got. <laughs> and if you if you were really inclined to play them, you probably would have done at this point, and there's easier ways to do it. So yeah. I, I don't yeah. I don't know. But we'll uh, we'll give them the benefit of the day. We'll give it. Yeah. We'll, we'll come back to it in a year, and we'll see how it's evolved. I suppose. Um, the second bit of big news, I would say, uh, talking mm. about um, selling old games back to you again, would be the PlayStation Classic announced. Yes, yes, it would. Thoughts on that? Um. I don't know. I've not. I've not really gone for any of these mini consoles so far. Just, oh. um, I'd like. I like them. I just, it would. They would just sit on my shelf, really. Mm. Um, because I. I just. I quite like my pie. I like having it all in one thing. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And that sounds terrible. I don't. I don't want to not support them, but, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I'm not. I'm not sensing know. a lot of excitement about it. No, no, not really. Um, I mean, I know you have more, a lot more fondness with PS One. Oh, I do. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, it's so big, I, big I'm sure it's the kind of thing that you would. It would be right up your street. And yeah, then... I pre-ordered it the the morning it was announced. So I was really yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah refreshing cool. the um, really. game <laughs> game dot co dot uk because. I've re- I I ordered I pre-ordered my um the SNES mini from them and it came on release day so they burned cool. my trust a little bit there. Unlike, yeah. You know, other I like them. I just I can't warrant them really because I don't I don't have to be honest I don't have loads of money to to spend these days on on games and stuff. So I I think I'd rather like keep it to things that I really want that I sort of don't have. Yeah. You know. Um. Uh. uh I, uh, yeah, it sounds. I, I don't. I don't mean to, uh, no, <laughs> to to ruin your excitement of it or anything. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's any. <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. Anyway, carry on. Go, you, you go, go on. You you excite me about it. Go on. It's just. It's good, isn't it? It's, just, <laughs> it's good. But bunch of games, you know. Bunch it's, of games. Yeah. Bunch of roms. Bunch of roms. <laughs> <laughs> what, no, what, have we, I, what, I, what, what have we got on it? What's what's been announced? So um, well, that that would be the odd thing they haven't really announced out that much. It's got mm. Final Fantasy VII on it, um, yeah. which is Excellent. you know they they could not have that on there. No. I don't think. Yeah. Um, Retracer Type Four, um, mm-hmm. which is a, a brilliant game, is a bit of an odd choice because I think it's it's best played with um, uh, the. If you ever used a Neg Kong controller. No, I don't think I've ever even heard of that. Oh no, it's not Negcon. Uh, Namco did a, a couple of um, odd controllers. Negcon was um, it sort of twisted in the middle. It was like two halves of a controller. Oh, I know the one. Yeah, I've yeah. seen it. Yeah. And then yeah. they did the one for Ridge Racer Type Four was the Jogcon, and it's like a controller and it's got like a big sort of wheel in the middle, um, right. and you it's got like a little um, indentation so you can move the wheel around with your thumb. Mm. Um, and you can use that for analog steering, but it's got actual force feedback, so it will fight against you trying to turn the wheel around. So as you're going oh, around the corner, cool. it will sort of fight against you. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing I you think... can't use that peripheral on the on the, no, on the you, mini. No, the mini's only um, the little controllers are USB by the look of it, and they're just oh, okay. the pure digital. They don't have any analog six or. Um, uh, they're not the Dual Shock. Not the Dual Shock. They're just the the standard original ones. Yeah. Um, so. You know, Ridge Racer Type Four is still a really good game, but when you take away the analog control, I think you'll get your, and especially the the force feedback control, I think you're going to lose a little bit of the experience there. Yeah. Um, Wild Arms is included. Um, I've never played it, but I've heard it's good. Um, what is Wild Arms? I think I it's like name. A, I think it's like an action RPG type thing. I'm going to Google okay. it now to make sure that I'm um I'm actually right, but I believe it's like an action RPG type affair mm-hmm. uh let's have a look wild arms but yeah i mean it, it's basically just a you know some some heavy hitters nothing there's some um some notable things that haven't been announced yet um i mean obviously i'd expect it to have um 
Metal Gear Solid at least, but yeah. given how Konami have been in recent years, I don't know if that's going to be, you know, feasible. Mm. Um, yeah, Wild Arms is a tactical RPG apparently, so yeah. Okay. Uh, it's one of those, I think it's quite an expensive one, which is why I've never picked it up. Hmm. Uh, let me just have a look. PlayStation Classic. Let's see what else they've got on there. PlayStation Classic. Uh, you've got to scroll. Oh, Jumping Flash. Do you ever play Jumping Flash? A little rabbit. No, that was a ver- that was a very there? early first person platformer. Is that right? Yes, that's the one. Yeah. 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 Mm. That's on there. That's quite an interesting, interesting one. Interesting choice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tekken 3. Yep. And I think that's what they've announced so far. Okay. Is it about 20 of them, is it? 20 gonna there's going to be, yeah. Okay, so we've got a few more to go, yeah. Yeah. But I mean... It'll be I, interesting to see them um Yeah, it'll be interesting. Because the thing is, a lot of the, the key PlayStation games, like the, the iconic games, uh, mm. from a lot of third-party developers, as you know, um, say uh, Tomb Raider, I'd expect to be on there. That's something that people well, really that, associate. That's, that's the thing. I mean, that's the thing about Sony, the... They didn't. They didn't really have any first-party games as such, did they? Or they was all like other companies. Is well, that they, right? they did. I mean, they they have got a few. They they can they can pick. Uh, one of them mm. I'm not going to mention because that's that's going to be my pick for the the game we play next time. Um, uh, but they've got things like uh, Gran Turismo um, is a, a first-party title, so they. I, I, I'd be very surprised if they haven't got Gran Turismo on. Yeah. There. Yeah. Um, you know, um, Ape Escape, which you can't. Uh, Ape Escape's a brilliant game, but they can't have that on there because it's uh, analog control only. You can't. You, oh, okay. you you can't play it with a, a, a digital controller. So yeah. they, they they have got some some good first party titles, but um, you know things like Tomb Raider, things like Metal Gear Solid, Resident Evil, mm. um, all kinds of th- you know things like that. Grand Theft Auto is another one that's that's yeah you know, uh, was a key thing in in the you know putting the PlayStation on the map. And these are all, not just third-party titles, but from developers that have been sold and bought and sold and bought out by other people. So it's just a minefield of licensing and stuff, I'd imagine. So I don't know, I really don't know what else is going to be included on it. But um, I think it's going to be a good package. It looks like a really neat little, you know, neat Mm. little um, uh, box and the controllers all, all look quite cute and the... You know they've replicated the original packaging for the the PlayStation and stuff. So yeah, yeah. I'm on board with it. Um, I don't quite know how I'm going to afford it, but uh, you know it's <laughs> between now and December, so I can crack in some overtime or something. Yeah, cool. But yeah, no, that's good. Okay. Um. Well, unless there's anything else you you want to discuss that's happened since our last show. Um. I just wanted to give a little shout out. Um. I was um. I was in um Devon. Uh, last week and I happened to stumble on holiday and um, it's not often when you're on holiday and you stumble upon uh, like a, a lovely indie um, games shop no. and um, I, I I saw it and it had well it had retro stuff in there and it had like a mega drive in there and you know a few, a few retro games in there and I thought oh my god this is amazing yeah. <laughs> it's just like it's like my dream shop and I was yeah. in there for like 45 minutes Um <laughs> And uh, they had a, they had a. It's just, uh, it's called Item Drop, and it's in Seaton in Devon. So I, I just wanted to give them a shout out, you know, because you got to support the indies. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, so if you're in that sort of area, check them out. They had, um, they had mostly sort of modernish stuff. They had a lot of merchandise, uh, some really cool stuff, um, but a lot of retro as well, and sort of mid mid generation stuff, like the last couple of generations as well. Um, a lot of their stuff wasn't priced. It was sort of it almost it would almost looked like someone had just dropped their entire like N sixty four and like Mega Drive collection because there was boxes and boxes full of them and they hadn't been priced yet. So I was sort of sifting through some really not most of them were in fully boxed the N sixty four games as well, which is That's pretty rare, cool. Yeah. That is rare. There's, high, there's far more boxed than, than unboxed. Um, some really good condition ones as well. Um, I ended up going away with um, Ocarina of Time, which I didn't have in physical form. Um, uh, so yeah, that was uh, that was a good find, um, and and yeah, just wanted to shout good them out. Good prices, yeah, pretty reasonable. Um, maybe a little bit more than what you would pay in like I don't know CEX for example, but I think it's worth it. You know, that's the thing. I mean, you know, they're, they're going to have bigger overheads being sort of in the yeah. shop and stuff. Of course they so, are, but it was you know. it was really nice. It, you know, it's I think it's quite a good being in a sort of more of a place where you're going to catch the tourist side because. Yeah. When you when you're on holiday, you're kind of in the in the mindset to spend a bit more anyway. 
so it does that that you can almost negate that so uh, and it's just it was a really seaton is a really really sort of sleepy town there's a lot of like you know charity shops and like sort of uh, quite a, a large population of older people <laughs> so it's like it was so <laughs> unexpected to just stumble yeah. upon that it, it seems really out of place but i think that's that's good because it makes it stand out more to any young people passing by so oh, um that's good i mean if it gets uh the your, your seal of approval then absolutely it's really really good yeah i mean Check if any out. anyone follows me on twitter or if you followed me on twitter for any any period of time you'll know that i'm vehemently against advertising i hate it i hate spon- i hate listening to a podcast and they go this show's sponsored by yeah. <laughs> crapmattress.com or yeah you know, it's i hate it so it's not a sponsorship. It's a anything no, you mention on the show. It's like a, it's going to be a genuine endorsement because exactly, exactly. You know, you know we um, you know, we really like it. We're not been paid off. Yeah, I, I yeah, absolutely. Just hate mm-hmm. all that stuff. So yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, uh, item drop. Item drop. They have a website uh, where you can order online. So um, yeah, check them out. Cool. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, well, should we take a break then? And yeah. uh, we will discuss our book club game of the pick. Of the pick? Get of the book pick. Cl- of the pick. <laughs> book club pick of the month. The, the book club of the episode. pick of the month. Power yeah. Stone. Yeah. It's a good one. Mm. Okay. We'll be back after this. In the 19th century, people are strong believers of superstition and legend. Adventurers seek the world for fortune and glory and a legendary treasure which has the power to make dreams come true. That treasure is known as the Power Stone. And we're back, part two of the show. And mm. we're going to be talking about uh, Ollie's book club pick of the week, month, year. Power Stone. <laughs> Power Stone for the Sega Dreamcast. Yeah, it was developed and published by Capcom. Um, it was first released in the arcade um, in February ninety. Uh, sorry, February ninety nine uh, in Japan, um, and then released in the Dream on the Dreamcast at the same time in Japan. Um, and I think it was a launch game in both the US and the in Europe, if I'm not mistaken. Really, was it a launch game? Yeah, in Europe as well? I think so. It says the 9th of September in 99, oh, which is the right 9th of the 9th, 99 for US, and then 14th of October um, for us, which I think is, was our release date for Dreamcast as well. Um, so, yeah. And it was also uh, re-released on the PSP uh, in October 2006. Yes, yeah, so that was uh, um, the, with collection with the, the collection. The collection with Power Stone 1 and 2, yeah, which is, um, which is really good. That's actually the version I played. I emulated this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I sort of ran it on the Dreamcast emulator for a bit, and I, I found it may just be the emulator, but the frame rate was a little bit choppy. So I tried it on the PSP version, um, and that was lovely because you because um, I, I upped the internal resolution really high. It's nice and widescreen anyway because the PSP is widescreen. It looks fabulous mm. on the. So um, because this isn't a game that you can buy in the sense that you can give the developers money for it anymore. Because it's not been re-released digitally as yet, you know, you you have to, and if you want to buy this, if you want to buy it, you have to buy the original. Um, so I would recommend emulating the PSP one if you if you can, because it's really really good. Yeah, really the, good you're right. There's no digital release of it at all at the moment, is there? No, no. That's surprising. So, um, I think I think we'll probably get to that, but um, it, it is it's surprising that it, it doesn't get much love from from Capcom. It seems it's. No. it's it's quite surprising. Yeah. So I, mean, I think it's fair to say it's it's got a, a quite a cult following. Um, it does a bit, yeah. Um, the fans of Power Stone, especially the ones that we we've spoken to on Twitter, um, yeah. they seem to be extremely passionate about it. Um, yeah. So it's got it's got a small following, but a really enthusiastic following. It does, yeah. Um, it's uh, it's a fighting game. First of all, I don't think we mentioned that yet. I know. If I, suppose, heard of I it, suppose we better if, give, give yeah, a description. If you've never it. heard of it, <laughs> it's a fighting game, but it's not like your typical fighting game, is it? No. It's, um, I mean, uh, pretty much every other fighting game, even if it's polygonal, it's essentially 2D. Yeah. Right? Because you've got two guys, there's a side on view of two guys facing each other and fighting. This, um, there's not, I mean, I think there's a few, there's not many other fighting games like it. It's sort of, um, it's much more of a 
sort of a third person, um, almost like a platformer's view of a of a fighting game, isn't it? Really, yeah. A 3D I, I can think of a couple of other games that did it that did a similar kind of style, but certainly not as good as Power Stone. It, it no. is certainly an unusual, it's an, an, a not a common um, approach to a fighting game. So you've got kind of like a a 3D sort of multi tiered arena that you're yeah. you, that you fight within, and you you you've got free movement, sort of. 360 degree movement around that arena um yeah you can sort of jump around on different platforms um and yeah you're basically objective but you're still fighting another person your objective is to take their health bar i think they've got six health bars haven't they but they all kind of function as one um take the health bar down and um yeah beat them basically um but there's lots of weapons that appear in sort of treasure boxes that sort of spontaneously appear in the arena aren't they you can get things like mallets and you know guns and stuff and that's quite interesting you know yeah. th- to have like projectile weapons in a in a fighting game you so you can you know take down a character from a quite a distance you know there's, there's a bit more of a strategic element to it i found um well i mean as someone who isn't very technical in fighting games it's just a button masher this gave sort of gave me a chance to to sort of move around the arena and to think okay i can sort of keep my distance and keep throwing like attacks like there's there's sort of crates around that you can sort of kick and they'll sort of ho- almost home in on towards the enemy usually don't they yeah um and it's kind of it kind of encourages you to to um, to sort of know your way around the arena a bit i found and kind of stay on your toes and be able to keep jumping around because uh, the other the, the big gimmick is the power stones themselves. I was going to say, yeah, the the, the power stones. Um, is it three you've got to collect through? Yeah, yeah it's, I think it's, yeah. it's three kind of these coloured jewels that will appear, and once you get three of them, uh, you transform into sort of a super version of yourself. Yeah. With sort of a, and once that happens, basically the. <laughs> The, uh, the the game's over for the other person. I found I found that sort of playing anyway. But the default settings for the the health, I found as soon as someone got that uh, kind of special ability, that was it. Usually, unless yeah, you're unless uh, yeah, usually you can you can avoid it, but it's quite difficult it, if you're not. You can get by with just a slither of health, but I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's the the scales it's, it's are quite often in, in whoever's got it. Yeah, I, I actually went into the options. Um, I'm assuming you can do this on Dreamcast one as well. You can on the PSP. Um, I just increased the health a bit, and then also made it just one round. So uh, the one round lasts a lot longer, but it was a bit more exciting then because uh, it yeah. wasn't just the first to get the power stones. You know, it kind of lasted quite a lot longer. So I, I sort of set set that setting up. I did play. Um, it. I, I played um, played it on the Dreamcast, but I I just kept all the default options. I didn't go into. Mm. I didn't even go into the options to see if that was a, a possibility. So I don't know if that's something that that you can do. But I imagine you can. I I just I, just I think you can. Default, I think I, I think I did that on when I played it on the Dreamcast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so the 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 power stones will spawn throughout the arena during the course of the um, yes the match, and and it's kind of it becomes like a scramble of who's going to pick does. up the the power stones. Um, yeah, you almost stop fighting and yeah. then just try and leg it towards the power stone. But if your opponent um, picks up the power stone, if you land enough attacks on them, they will drop it, and then you can that's try right. and pick it up as well. So it's you know there's. It just becomes once the power stones are all in play, it becomes like a real scramble of who's going to get it, and you you know you're trying to attack them, but also yes. you know position yourself where you're going to you know get the next power stone. And yeah, that's another way uh, where the projectile attacks came in yeah. handy. If you've got like a gun or something where you can just fire it at the uh, at the opponent, the, the, sometimes the power stone will just fly right out to <laughs> straight into you, yeah. which is quite cool. I did that a few times. I think it, um, it's quite interesting, like you say, with most traditional fighting games you're on sort of a, a 2d plane and mm. it's all kind of close quarters combat and i think it's mm. it's quite it's refreshing to have sort of ranged combat um in the mix as well it, it does yeah. it really changes up how you approach playing the game and how you approach it strategically i think it's yeah yeah it's, it's a it's a really really interesting addition mm. yeah i really liked it it was this very sort of frenetic and very, um, I guess it's a bit like Smash Brothers in the sense that it's kind of not not a super serious fighting game. Yeah, it's kind of that of that ilk. You know, it's not like you know these characters are quite cartoony, quite anime styled. Um, 
you know, there's lots of sort of very bright colours, lots of sort of, you know, kind of explosions and big kind of, I don't know, sort of cartoony effects to it, I think. Yeah. A very distinctive um, art style to it as well. Very, I, you know, yeah. I, I, I love the character designs um, mm. and, and just the whole, the whole appearance of the game. I, I think it's, it's really distinctive. It's really, is you couldn't mistake it for anything else. It's really got its no. own sort of unique character, I think. You know, you, yeah. you, you see a screenshot of it, you see it in action and it's, it's unmistakably Power Stone. You couldn't, you couldn't confuse it with anything else. I think that's a, a really good, good thing in its favour yeah. as well. Yeah. I think it's much more of a sort of a, um, a kind of a pick up and play kind of party take on the, on the fighting game. Oh, definitely. Genre, I, mean, I think, isn't it? Like you say, I mean, it, it, it was originally an arcade game and I think it's, mm. you know, the fact it was designed for the arcades is, is really evident in, in how it plays, yeah. you know? Well, that, that's true of so much of the Dreamcast library, really. Yeah. It's very, it's a very arcadey library. It and, is. Um, yeah. You know, as, as a, as a sort of a launch title, it makes perfect sense for the console, really. Cause it, it's full of games that are just great fun to pick up and play. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like you say, it's it's one of those games uh, you can play it on your own. I mean, we we played it just against a computer, but I think it's one of those yeah. games that would really come into its own when you've got a bunch of mates around. Oh, definitely. You know, yeah. and you I think the fir- I think the first one's only two player, but the second one is four player. The second one is four player, I believe. And yeah. that must be completely mental. That's yeah. That's that that mm. must be a, uh, that's. It just must be great fun. I could just yeah. imagine it being absolutely. I do. Crazy. I, I do want to touch on the second one in a minute. We'll we'll um, we'll finish up on the first one sure. first. But the second one's really good as well. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else. Um, I mean, it's uh, we were we were saying in the break. It's kind of like it's it's not like the last couple of games that we've played where it, you know you would kind of spend a lot of time sort of really engrossed. You know, it's just it's it's not like it's it is very arcadey. It's very mm-hmm. kind of. It's literally just got one mode, really, and it's that's just like fight a series of characters. Yeah. There's a couple of bosses at the end that you don't play as, um, and even the last boss, I didn't play it myself. I saw it on YouTube. It's kind of it's almost more of a almost more of a sort of platform games boss, really, where you sort of he's not moving, and you're kind of going around him and avoiding his attacks and okay. stuff, which is quite interesting. But it's literally just that, and you kind of you've got like I think it's eight different characters to play as. Yeah. They're kind. Of, they I mean. They don't. They don't have as many individual moves. I would say, not that I noticed anyway. Really, they they do vary in their special moves and stuff. But um, and they kind of have different stats. Like some of them will be quicker, some of them better at jumping, that kind of thing. But I, I played several different characters. I didn't notice a huge amount of difference between them. Did you? Did you find they all any? handle fairly similarly? Um, from yeah. what I found, um, I mean, say you take something like Street Fighter Two. Um, mm. all the characters there handle very differently. They feel differently weighted. Um, you mm. know, the, 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 every character has its own individual handling. That I'm not saying that Power Stone doesn't, but I think it's more more subtle. It's not as noticeable. Um, yeah. I think they 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 all handle fairly similarly. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's not really a mark against it because oh, no, I think it all, is it, it is great fun. It's just one of those games that is it, there's not a lot of depth to it, no. But it's you know you can just dive right in. You know what you're doing. That's the thing. I mean, it's... again, we were we were having a quick chat in the break, um, and I think well, I think we needed to start recording anyway because we we'd end up talking about it too much in the break and not get any bit on tape. <laughs> but. Um, I hesitate to use the word shallow because I think it's got a negative con- connotation to it. Mm. Um, I don't think it's a particularly deep game. Um, I no. think if you were to to pick up and play it uh, for half an hour, you you you're going to get a feel for what the game is. I don't think there's Definitely. there's a great deal of depth there. Um, but I don't want that to be. I'm not saying that's a negative because if you no. think of, um, say, another arcade fighter like Tekken, um, does do like Tekken one and two and um, to an extent three, they weren't particularly deep games either. You, you know, you pick no. it up, you play, you 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 pick a character, you fight another character, and and you know that's it. You become proficient mm. at your your favorite character. But I mean, there's not like a, a huge. There is a story, but it's never the reason you're playing. 
No. You know, it's no. there's not there's not sort of lots of narrative to get stuck into. There's not um you know different all all alternate modes and and play styles and things like that. I think it's I'm I'm worried I'm going to cop some heat for this, but I I just think it's I don't it's simple but I'm not mm. saying that as a negative. I think that's no, in its favour because I think if you you for a good arcade game, you want to be able to just pick it up and play exactly. it with people who've never played it before. You just want to be able to hand mm. them a controller and everyone have fun with it without having to worry about you know learning all the special moves and learning all the all the mechanics of the game. You just want to be able to have fun with it, and I think that's yeah. it's simple in that sense. And that you know I do, I want to make it clear that's a, a point in its favour. But absolutely, I mean. Uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I love a button masher, and you know I like a nice, simple fighting game. I've never been one. I don't think I've ever been able to learn like the moves of a of a character in any fighting game. Really, to be honest, it's just too hard. I can't do it. I don't have the right brain for it. But uh, and and this, it's refreshing that this game doesn't sort of force you into that in any way. Really, as far as I could tell, anyway. I mean, uh, there's, you know, you you when you turn into super, you get a couple of different kind of moves. You, when you do that, you get a little bar that determines how long you stay in your super form for. And um, there's a couple of different moves that you can utilize. And one of them is a really kind of big explosive move that basically t- sucks up the whole thing, where there's other ones that chip away at it more slowly, mm-hmm. and don't do quite as much damage. And you can sort of, uh, you know, choose your strategy there, I guess. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's just, it's just a really fun, fun fighting game. You know, it's, that's all there is to it really. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, should we go through some of the characters? Yeah, I've got yeah. a few notes here. Um, the plot um, it, it's fairly thin. It, I'm, I'm going to read it straight off Wikipedia. Um, so, set in the 19th century, strong believers of legends, myths, and superstitions search for fame, fortune, and glory. One legend above all is sought after by many, a treasure which can make any dream come true. Believers from all over the world set out to search for this treasure and are forced to fight against one another in pursuit of the legendary power stone. So that's pretty much it, really. That's kind of like a load of different fighters are uh, fighting over a, a gem, you know. Oh, as good nice a story as you need, isn't it? Yeah. So it, and it does have like a nice quite sort of adventure kind of aesthetic to it, doesn't it? If yeah. you look at like sort of the menus, they got like nice map. Oh sort yeah, of screens. It's like I say, like, I love the art style and I love the whole mm. aesthetic they've got going on with it. It's, it's really, really nice. Yeah, you've got the the main sort of the default character called Ed- Edward Falcon, who. Um, do you know what his Japanese name is? Fokker. Is, is, yes, Fokker. <laughs> In the Japanese version, he's called Fokker, mm. which is named after the plane he, he flies, apparently. Um, but he's British, which I found quite um, uh, unusual to have the main character in a fighting game as, as the British character. I suppose, yeah. It's usually like a Japanese character, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, yeah, mm. an American character, yeah. Yeah, sort of a, a sort of fairly generic one. I mean, he kind of looks fairly gen. Well, yeah, he's a, he's a pilot. He's both dressed in pilot uniform. It's not really that generic, is he? Um, so he's quite cool. He, he's transformed into sort of um, sort of an Iron Man kind of style robot, doesn't he? Yeah, he's quite cool. Uh, you got Wang Tang, who's um, that's who I played sh- as most as. Oh, okay, yeah, Wang yeah, he was quite good. He's an asp- aspiring chef and martial artist. Um, I, he d- he did have an annoying trait where he said "lucky, lucky" yeah. every time he gets a <laughs> gets an item, which yes. is quite uh, grating. Yeah. Um, Rayoma, um, which one was that? Um, Master Swordsman. Oh, he's the the sort of samurai guy. Yeah, yeah. So he's a samurai. Um, Ayame, um, it's a sort of a Kunoichi. That's a female ninja, I believe. Um, so she's like the the sort of the the token ninja female character. She doesn't look much like a ninja, but she's like a Japanese kind of girl. You've got Rouge, who's um, who's kind of a, a fortune teller, kind of a gypsy, I think. Um, oh, Jack. Jack is an interesting character. He's the kind of the creepy yeah. green guy we who's got like about, a half-wrapped face. Yeah, we were speaking about um, Soul Calibur earlier. Yeah, he reminds I know what you're me say. of Voldo. Yeah. Yes, me too, exactly. Like his he's movements very, very... and his animation, he's yeah, yeah, very he, Voldo like He's very weird. Yeah. A weird character. He kinda of crawls around the arena, doesn't he? Yeah. Very, very quickly. He's very odd. Yeah. This says um he's um likely to be a reference to Jack the Ripper. Oh, okay. So he comes from a place Manchester's reference to Manchester, so another potentially British character, that's interesting. Yeah. Um and he transformed into a mad clown, apparently. Um 
Gunrock. He's the big guy, wasn't he? I like Gunrock. Yeah, the, the big round guy. He transforms into basically the thing from Fantastic Four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Galuda, who is... Oh, he's the, the Native American guy. Mm. He's turns into a sort of a wooden kind of person. <laughs> and then you've got the bosses. You've got um, Kraken, who's a pirate. Did you get that far? I didn't, no. Um, oh, okay. I didn't get that far on account of me being crap at the game. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to shoot. I was yet. quite bad at the game. Yeah, uh, I did use a couple of safe states. Not too many though. I've I've managed to sort of persevere and keep cracking on. But it is. It is. It's quite tough. It's a tough game. It is. Yeah. Um, it kind of keeps chopping away at you. But it it it, it, it didn't want me make me want to give up. It made me want to just keep, you know, keep going at it because it's really, it's um it's great fun. But yeah, he's kind of a pirate dude. You fight him on a pirate ship. That was quite cool. He transforms into like a ghost pirate. And then at the end, you've got a character called Volgas, who then transforms into um, uh, Final Volgas. So he's like the final boss. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's quite a sort of mix of characters. You know, some of the usual sort of stereotypes, I guess, that you kind of get in a lot of these fighting games. But I I quite like that, in a way. You know, it's quite nice. It gives a bit of variety. Um, Power Stone 2. Power Stone Two, yeah. I um I had a little play this. I really enjoyed Power Stone Two. I didn't I little... see. I've got it on my shelf. I've I mm. played it a couple of times, um, but I never put as much time into it as I did Power Stone One. Um, back okay. on, back back because I I bought the the two as a set. Um, oh right. So I, I haven't played. I, I didn't replay it for this show. I only played um the uh, Power Stone One. So I'd recommend giving it a try because it's really good. the uh, The arenas are much more um interesting. They they sort of change over time. Okay. Um, so you'll be in you'll you'll be in an, an arena. It's kind of like um, yeah, uh, it looks like a sort of a Japanese kind of you know lake kind of thing. And then suddenly everything starts setting on fire. And the fire starts chasing you. You have to kind of climb up these platforms while still fighting, and then oh, you kind of go into cool. another area. And then there's another one where you're sort of in the sky on these airships, and suddenly they start plummeting to the ground, and you're you're sort of free falling. Then you land on like these, um, you know, sort of floating ruins and stuff. So these arenas keep changing. See, with four uh, players as well, that's going to be quite, yeah, quite hectic. exactly. That's mental because you got you you're caught. You get keep getting caught by these things. These the sort of the environment that kind of damages you as well. So you've got to really stay on your t- your toes. Uh, and that was really, really good fun. There's like again, there was like a sort of a, almost a platformy kind of boss as well. And that's as far as I got this, this sort of big sphinx character that you have to sort of oh, okay. uh, sort of strike the, the the legs out to try and get to the head and that kind of thing. So um, yeah, really, I want to play some more of that actually because that was a really, really good game. It seemed to me anyway. Yeah. It's it's this it's got everything the first one has, but just expands on it, which is what a, a good sequel should do. Well, I think we we did a poll on Twitter on our on, on our Twitter page. We did um, asking what people's favorite game in the series was and i think mm. power stone 2 came out the clear winner on that one didn't it it did yeah so did. you know there does seem to be a, a definite preference for for power stone 2 so um yeah i i mean i i wouldn't be against covering that in a future episode to be honest um put a yeah. bit more time into yeah. it and you know polish up my skills on power stone 1 because as i said i'm i'm really atrocious at it um, <laughs> so you know i'm sure you know, guy. Oh the game does kind of does kind of um, take pleasure in beating you up. Um, yeah. But it, as I say, it's one that you you kind of want to persevere at and get better. I think. Yeah. Um, especially if you do what I said earlier and just turn that uh, health health bar up. That would be my pro tip for the game because that's um, and just set it down to one round as well. Because quite often in fighting games, quite that, that two round thing is quite frustrating. Like you 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 fight your heart out to get that one round victory, and you're like yes, and then then the, then the the opponent like creams you two in a row, and then you got to do it all over again. Yeah. Isn't that? Just with one makes it a bit more simple. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I was re- yeah, like you say, it really does like to to beat you up. Um, mm. I I, re- I remember thinking as I was playing it, I'm really glad. That this is a podcast and not a YouTube channel or a Twitch channel, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, it would just just be humiliating to see um, my performance on that. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, it sounds like like you, you mentioned at the beginning of of the segment, um, probably the best option to go for if you want to to dip your toes into to Power Stone would be to go for the the PSP collection, probably. Um, yeah, it's a really you, good you get collection. The, the two I... games. Yeah, I do own that uh, as well, and I have played it on the PSP plugged into my TV. It is um, it is good, but if you can emulate it, it's even better because um, it just bumps that resolution up really, really. It's like basically if they were to re- release um, an HD 
version for modern consoles is exactly, it's exactly what it would look like. And that's that's one thing I did want to cover before we before we wrap up. And um, mm. why has it been abandoned? Um, I don't know. I, I really no don't idea. know because it, it's it's. It's known as a as a popular Dreamcast game of the of the Dreamcast library. Yeah. It's it's sort of up there in the in the sort of. And you know, they obviously the dabbled with the idea list. of bringing it back for for them to give it a, a PSP release. And so, also, it, did you know that it has an anime series attached to it as well? I I did know that, but only I only learned that today. Um, when yeah, I was sort of doing it's, the it's last weird, bit of isn't research it? For the the show, so yeah. It's funny. It was obviously popular enough to, to commission yeah. an entire, you know. Uh, 26 episode at least I think um, anime series about the whole, all the characters and everything um, you know just based on two games you yeah. know so it's, it had some something going for it I think now and you know it would it could really um, do well on like the Switch you know it's Absolutely. a great pick up and play say, game the, the, the Switch you know, would if you, be an ideal platform for it if you're on the, if you're on the train or the bus you know a quick round you know it'd be perfect yeah. it's, it's, um, it's a great game for that well, you, really you know, good you, you, you know four Joy-Cons Little portable, oh, yeah. little portable Brilliant. console, take it around your friends, you know, you're sorted. I mean, that's a that's I can imagine it's, it's a fantastic multiplayer game, it really is, and, you know, that would work wonders on the Switch. Yeah, I, I really don't know why, I mean, it, it just seems like one of those games that's, that's begging for a re-release. You yeah. know, either a, a HD release on, on modern consoles, or a full-blown sequel. I do, it just seems to be stagnating, and I, yeah. you it's know, having revisited it, I did think, you know... Maybe it's just not as good as I remember. Maybe it's just a bit, you know. But it's not. It's a really good game. And it is great. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really just good. a mystery yeah. why it's it's just been just been abandoned. Mm. Well, Get that's on that's it, two, Capcom. Capcom. That's two for your list. You've got you've got Ghost Trick and you've yes. got um, uh, Power Stone to um, to do more with. Oh, I tell you, you what, give me a Ghost Trick release on the Switch. A nice HD. Oh, all, yeah. all, oh <laughs> God, I love it. That'd be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I think we'd um, we'd recommend this game. Oh, I think so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, excellent. Definitely, okay. and uh, like I say, the fan base that we've we've interacted with on Twitter, um, you know, kept sort of canvassing opinions for the show, and again, you know, people's thoughts and opinions on it. It's got a really passionate fan base behind it. So yeah, it does definitely. Yeah, so hopefully Capcom will listen, and mm. like I say, give us a, I'll buy a, a, a package of it on the, on the Switch, and, yeah, you know, me too. A Power Stone mm. 3, I think, it, you know, it'd be, an, it would be an obvious seller, you know, it's, it's yeah. going to go. So, um, we're going to choose another game for the next month. Yes, it's your turn, and I was going to say, mm-hmm. the last two times you've picked them, You've revealed what the system is before you you tell me what it is, and I was going to say this time I have no idea what you what you're going to say, but, but you've already spoiled that by saying it's going to be a PlayStation oh, yeah, game in this episode, I did, <laughs> so yeah. I can't say that anymore. Oh yeah, <laughs> but I have no idea what it is, so you know, go on. Well, let me tell you first, it's yeah. a PlayStation game. Yeah, we got that. It's going to be medieval. Oh, cool. Okay, have nice. You, have you played it? Have you had any experience I'm, with it? No, um, it's kind of, is it a, it sort of looks like a claymation game, is it? It looks like it's made out of claymation, am I thinking of that, or am I thinking of something completely No, different? you are thinking, it, it's not claymation, but it does have a very sort of Tim Burton, Nightmare Before Christmas kind of okay. Um, okay. sort of aesthetic to it. What kind of game is it? Um, platformer, sort of action platformer. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know a lot about it. I know, uh, I think I'm visualising the character as kind of a skull. Is that the right guy? That's the one, is yeah. skull? Yeah. Sir so Daniel that's... Fortescue. <laughs> okay, that's literally <laughs> all I know about the game. So um, well, that, it, sounds, that sounds really cool. Apparently, I mean, Sony have not mentioned anything about it since they announced it, but it, it's going to be getting a, a 4K HD remaster um, on okay. PlayStation 4. Um, but they announced that a while ago, and then it's all gone quiet, and nothing's been talked oh. about since. So I don't know if it's been quietly dropped or if it's still on the mm. cards. But um, either way, I think it's a good time to, to have a look back at it and revisit it. And um, it's one of the games I would love to see on the, the PlayStation um, Classic. So... Mm. Uh, yeah, um, I think that'll be my pick of the month, and we'll we'll have a chat and see. It's quite a long game, um, so. <sighs> I w- okay, all right. <laughs> but I I'm would, joking. you know, I wouldn't worry about, um, you know, let's not 
push ourselves to play it to yeah, completion. Um, that's fine. That's fine. It's, yeah, it's 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 a bit of a mammoth game. Um, sure. But yeah, you play a few that's levels. Absolutely fine. You, you know, yeah. if you you you'll play enough to see some some of the sort of set piece levels and some of the the key events of the game. So um, okay. yeah, I think we'll cool. we'll have a good no, time. No, I'm that. looking forward to it. Excellent. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, let's wrap it for now then. Um, yep. Uh, as always, if you follow us on Twitter at Pod'em Up, and uh, you can send mm-hmm. us emails uh, at Pod'em Up at gmail dot com. That's the one. That's the one. Mm-hmm. Um, don't send me any hate mail for saying um, Power Stone was shallow because it was good. It was a good shallow. Yeah. It was a good shallow. Yeah. Like a, it's a good like type a of nice, shallow. It's fine. Like a nice, like a paddling pool. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Sometimes you want a paddling pool. Sometimes you want a big deep ocean. Exactly. You know, we're not judging. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um. So yeah. Please do send us your opinions. Um. On anything we've covered uh, on the show so far, and if um, mm. if you've got any thoughts on medieval, please let us know as well. And we will yep. be back. Uh. Again, our usual schedule seems to be about once a month. So um. Yeah. Barring anything cropping up in between now and then, uh, we'll see you then. Okay, bye guys. Bye.